Okay, this is a, an exercise on website image optimization. Website image optimization is extremely important for website design. If our images are poorly done, they could look bad. And likewise, if they are needlessly too big, they can slow our websites down. So really two things that are, are important that I want you to keep in mind. One is always optimize the image to try to get it as small of a file size as possible without sacrificing the quality of the image. <clears throat> Next, always create your images at the exact pixel dimensions you need. And that will also uh, allow you to get it to the fi smallest file size possible. All right, so that's what we're going to go through today. Uh, for this exercise, uh, this is the class website <clears throat> to date. And we want to add another one. We had an image that was already done for us. You didn't have to create that. Uh, so we're going to create a new one, somewhat from scratch. We're actually going to use a file that's already done, but we need to convert it uh, to something that we want to do. So I want to add another image that's about 300 by 300 pixels. That's what this one is. And we're going to place it right down here uh, in the text so that it, uh, we have another image for this page. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go... So the, the pixels that I'm going to want, I decide ahead of time, is going to be 300 by 300 pixels. So that's going to be the ultimate goal for this exercise. So for this exercise, 300 by 300 pixels is the desired size. And we know that screen resolution is 72 dpi. That's what we're going to build our site to, or our image to. The image that I have, I already have an image, and it's called philo0002.jpg. If you want to follow along, you can go to Module 2 and download philo002.jpg. And then you could follow along if you want to do that. You're also going to need the Photoshop software as well. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go to Photoshop now, and we're going to open up the file that we need. And it's on my desktop, and there it is. Now, in this situation, this was artwork that existed ahead of time. And so it didn't come to me as a web image, and that's quite often how this is going to work. You might have files that have been used for other types of projects, print projects, other web projects, who knows what, and they may not even be in the right file type that you need it. Uh, so that's also going to be an important part of the web exercise or to create your image is you're either going to have a JPEG or a PNG file. Most of the time you're going to use a JPEG. The only time you really need a PNG is when you have any kind of transparency in the image. Otherwise, JPEG is always going to be your smallest file size. All right? And that's really it. There are other web file types such as GIFs, uh, SWFs, um, bitmaps. Generally speaking, though, no, any more these are the two file types that you'll use. And the only time you'll really ever need to use a PNG file is transparency. Um, and I recommend that you don't just use PNG for everything because PNG can do everything a JPEG can, but PNGs are bigger in file size. So you don't get any different image, but you have a larger file. That's not good. So to get it as small as possible, we're going to do JPEG. <clears throat> so here's our image. Uh, we can go and look at the image settings. If you go to Photoshop, there's image, image size. So this is where you can get the current dimensions for your image. And we can see here that it's 1,000 pixels by 400 pixels at 150 resolution. So that's more than we need. We know that we need to get this to 300 by 300 and 72 resolution. <clears throat> 
But since it's 300 by 300, the first thing I'm going to need to do is crop my image to where I got a, I have a square. So I'm going to use this crop tool. You can also hit the letter C, and I can move this around. Oops, let me put that back on. All right, so I can move this around. And I grab the corners, but I, oops, didn't want to rotate that. And we can move the image to where we need it. You can play around with this tool till you get it where you like it. And I probably want to get a little, get that artwork at the top. And this is just, I don't know, a stupid little image. Um, but this is a three, this is a, in a square aspect ratio. I don't have it at dimensions yet, but I need to get it to a square first. So as soon as I have the crop mark where I like it, I can just hit return, and it's now cropped the image. Now let's go back to image size, and we'll see that it's now 281 by 281, but by 150. So we actually want to change this to 72 by 300. And most of the time what I find in Photoshop is you have to change the resolution before you change the dimensions. Sometimes if you change the dimensions and then the resolutions, sometime, uh, for some reason it will change your width and height as you go. So now we're about to get it to 300 by 300 pixels at 72 pixels per inch, which is what we wanted. And there we go. I can get this to 100% and that's about what it's going to look like. <clears throat> At this point, I need to save this for web, and this is how it works in Photoshop. Recently, in 2015, this has changed. Um, another program that you could use instead of Photoshop is Adobe Fireworks, and Adobe Fireworks is going to work much like Photoshop File Save as for web. So at the new Photoshop, there used to be a Save for Web in this area right here and it's no longer there. They have moved it into the export submenu. So under export, we'll see this option for save for web legacy. This probably means that Photoshop's eventually going to take save for web out of Photoshop. We're not really sure yet what's going to replace that. Maybe they want us to use a different program like Fireworks to do web graphics. But let's go ahead and use Photoshop. It's what I'm familiar with and I already have it. So I'm going to just use this option for now. So here's Save for Web. <clears throat> and you get this option, and you get a window which lets you, have, lets you see your image, but then you also get all these options. Under the preset, I'm going to go ahead and choose JPEG High. And a lot of things here are set for me. Um, starting off with the quality. Now one thing I could do is I can keep changing this quality. It says I can drop the quality to get a, a smaller file size. At the very bottom corner you can see how big the file size is going to be. It says 12.42 kilobytes as a JPEG, keeping the 300 by 300 pixels. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and keep it the quality at 60. But if you wanted to change it, you certainly can change it. If you go too far, you may notice that the quality of the image goes down. And if it goes up higher, there may not be a whole lot of difference. So it's really a manual process to choose the quality in order to get the file as small as possible. Completely manual at this point. A couple of other options. One is this progressive. Um, what happens with progressive and embed color profile, the progressive, when uh, the site l is loading, if you don't have progressive checked, the image will not, it'll be blank until the whole file is there and then the image pops up on the web page. If you have progressive, the website visitor gets a low resolution blurry vis visual of your image and then once the file has loaded, it then goes crisp to a full image. And this is probably a better option, although it adds just a little bit of file size. And actually, in our case, it's slightly smaller. Anyway, um, go ahead and choose progressive most of the time. That tends to be the better option. 
and you can choose embed color profile if you've got some very specific colors assigned to your your image <clears throat> however embedding a color profile is going to increase your file size just a tiny bit so in my case it's since it's all just black and white black and white's pretty consistent across all computers I'm not going to worry about that but if I had very very specific colors that I wanted to be consistent across all monitors, I would choose Embed Color Profile right here. For this one, I'm going to leave it off. All right, so the rest of the settings are fine. I'm going to leave Metadata set to None. If you know what these things are, you certainly can play around with them, but for now, we're just going to choose None, and we'll hit Save. <clears throat> now, notice the file name capital letters, at least it doesn't have spaces or strange characters. I'm going to change that <clears throat> file name to philo hyphen uh, taking a step. I don't know, somewhat of a description at least of what's going on. Then I have to find my website folder and in my website folder, I should have already had an images or a media folder. I want to make sure that I'm saving this JPEG into that folder. Once I have it selected, I'll hit save. So now if I go to my website project file, I look in my images folder, it should be in there. All right, now this is actually pretty good so far. It's about 1,200 kilobytes. And the question is, could I get this file any smaller? Um, the answer is yes. And so I'm going to show you another place you can go. <clears throat> and I have a link in the, the module area for a place called tinypng.com. Uh, if you really get tired of trying to manually <laughs> crunch your and compress your files, <clears throat> um, this is a really handy website. Not only that, but in Photoshop, if I was to save this as a PNG, as one of my presets, PNG 24, which can include transparency, which is great, but I don't have any options to change quality. It's not a feature that's offered in the Photoshop Save for Web. So there's no way to get the PNG smaller. That's not good. So what do we do? We come to this website called PNG. And they even have a plugin for Photoshop. Uh, here's the Photoshop plugin that lets you export that straight out of Photoshop. And I actually happen to have it. I use it a lot. So here I got file export, and here's my tiny PNG option. And what this is going to do is it automatically gets your file as small as it possibly can. So you have to have a little dexterity to be able to see your files on your computer and see the website at the same time. So you might have to resize things around a little bit on your screen to be able to drag and drop into this little square. All right, so here I'm going to take Philo taking a step. Let's take note of how big it was ahead of time. It was 12 kilobytes, not super big, but if we have hundreds of images on our website, all of the file savings can definitely add up. So here we go. We're going to take this, drop it onto the website and it does its little thing. It says it's done and <clears throat> it managed to drop it from 12.4 to 10.1. So that's an 18% total savings. May not sound like a lot, <laughs> but it, certainly for larger images with images that have a lot of photo quality to it, uh, you're going to see much more drastic uh, results and definitely with PNGs. If you have a PNG with transparency saved, you're going to see a lot of file savings. So let's go ahead and download this from the website. I'm going to choose to save the file. And in this case, it puts it into my downloads folder. Yours might do something slightly different. You might get to choose where it goes. So now what I want to do is take the file that I downloaded and overwrite the file I had. 
Uh, on the Macintosh, all I have to do is drag it into the same folder, and it'll ask if I want to replace it. And I'll go ahead and choose Replace, and that is now done. So let's go take a look at our folder, and we'll see that there it is. There's our 10 kilobyte image, all optimized, size, and ready for web. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is web image optimization.